Nick Kaniski did a an interview with uh, Pollock and Thurston and talked about how he had been propositioned uh, many times during his WWE WWF, WWF career by Terry Garvin. He, he, he was he was actually only there for a relatively short period of time, less than a year. Um, so that story was not unfamiliar. I mean, I, I remember first hearing that story from Larry Matisik, who had heard from Gene, who, had, who was of course very close with Gene Kaniski, and um, you know was one of the all time great wrestlers. Um, and Nick was his, his son, and Nick was a tough guy, and uh, you know. Um, Call it, very good college wrestler and got into pro wrestling was thought to have pretty good potential good look and all that and um, had worked a few places and then went to WWF in 86 he'd not been wrestling for, for very long but it was number one he's Gene's son which you know to some people meant a lot um, and also more you know um, you know they, they, he, he had a look and they thought that he had a a shot and so he went to um, he went there and they basically did a thing when he first came as he would work they didn't have a developmental program then so if you had were a young guy who was maybe not ready for national television um, what they would do and they did this with Owen Hart they did it with Ultimate Warrior Tom McGee many many others you bring a guy in younger guy you send him on the road have him work with veterans you know and do arena matches and then sink or swim if they get over fine if they don't get over that's what happens um then you don't so he was not on tv but he was working there and apparently you know the the one thing um rene goulet told him that uh you know you, you you know this guy he was not fat but you know how those guys looked in the 80s they were all roided up and they were all shredded not all shredded but that's if you were a big name or you had you know you were sergeant slaughter or something you didn't have, you didn't have to be shredded but if you were nick kaniski to get a push there you know probably had to get on steroids and get shredded so Rene goulet went to him and just goes you know you gotta you gotta get shredded you gotta lose weight you know and he this was not a fat person and um so whatever and then um yeah terry garvin he said that Terry Garvin hit on him, and he said no, and, you know, um, said that, you know, promised that he, if he did it, he would get a big push, didn't do it. Same story as Jim Powers said, it's the exact same story pretty much, didn't get a big push, um, was there for a while, uh, finally complained to Vince, he said, and Vince said he would take care of it and Garvin was still hitting on him and you know he wasn't fired or anything but he was you know losing you know losing most of his matches by this point and I'm not saying see it's one of those rest it's one of those weird things because you can go and say see this is what happened but I will say that Nick Kaniski it was like I didn't I it's like it's like I didn't like some guys, you'll you, you if you watch and you'll just go like this guy deserves like this big push. Why is he not getting it? And with Nick Kaniski, I you know watching at that time, I never felt that. I just thought this is probably the level the guy should be. Now, if he had done it with Garvin, would they have pushed him more? You know, it's like you never know. You never know. Um, and but it's it's a horrible situation to put people in. And we've heard enough stories from enough people at this point in time where the credibility more and more completely is 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 you know especially when it comes to Terry Garvin the credibility is 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 very much that these stories are real and Vince knew about it Vince let it happen I remember when um, Joe Paterno the Joe Paterno thing came out and I was so s surprised because having covered wrestling and Vince McMahon and knowing the stories you know th that were very similar and Joe Paterno was like a god and Vince McMahon was like you know just Vince McMahon wrestling promoter I mean they wanted Joe Paterno to run for governor and everything like that and Joe Paterno was totally taken down statue removed and everything and, and should have been over this and I was like 
why don't they just pay everybody off like Vince would do? And, you know, but the, what, what the difference was, was that Joe Paterno, because he coached college football and was a, a famous college football coach, one of the greatest coaches of all time, the media, you know, went hard, hard, hard after that story. It was a horrible story. The, the Paterno story was a horrible story, too. Um, with Vince, you know, it's just wrestlers. It's fake wrestlers and, you know, ha, ha, ha. You know, that's what happens in fake wrestling. They, they had no respect, so there was no scrutiny. And Vince, you know, whatever. You know, I mean, Vince let it happen. Vince was aware. You know, I mean, what was going through his mind, he's all powerful, you know, and no one's going to tell him what to do. And Nick Kaniski, again, you know, this this story is not somebody coming out of the blue saying something that people didn't know. We knew that story. And Nick Kaniski had, had told the story to other people, and he had uh, many, many years ago, he told the story to Greg Oliver but he asked Greg Oliver that, you know, he didn't want to go public with it and he didn't want it out. And then, you know, this week, you know, he did the interview um, with uh, John Pollock and Brandon Thurston. And he, I guess for whatever reason, he's 62 years old, 63 years old. And um, I think 62. And he was just like, I guess he was just wanted it out at this time. Maybe he fi he figured my life is at a certain point and and you know whatever you know maybe you know when you're when you've got other jobs and you're working your way through um you know maybe you don't want vince's lawyers coming after you um trying to ruin your reputation you know for for telling the truth and things like that and now maybe with vince in the situation he's in he felt that there's no jerry mcdivitt and he can say it and he's not gonna have to deal with all the negativity from it and all the wrestlers burying him for being a bitter guy who never made it so he said it and um yeah i mean it's another story and it was allowed to happen and then the the final confrontation um so he's on a road on a tour and you know it's like one of those weekend tours and it's like let's just say um, it was it was like Toronto and um, I forgot the other city, Landover, Maryland, I think. Um, so he's he's working on this tour, and then they pull him from a show on the tour. So it's like he's let's say he's, you're working Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So he's pulled from the Saturday show for no reason, just probably you know Garvin fucking with him or whatever. Um, and so um, he doesn't get paid when in those days you know you got paid based on working so he's on the road and he's got this day and he's not getting paid so he was very upset that he was booked taken off the show in the middle of a tour and didn't get paid so he complained to vince about it and basically you know told vince that and go okay that's it um from now on you know it's just like i'm not you know and he was doing jobs most of the time by this point um no more jobs, you know, and um, if if someone wants to beat me, they're going to have to beat me, you know. And there's there were very few wrestlers on that roster that would have had a shot at him, very few. And and plus, the, what do you want? A, a real fight in the, in a wrestling match? I mean, that's the worst thing in the world. So so Vince fired him, you know. And he goes, "I'll finish up my my, my I'll finish up my book dates." And Vince goes, "No, you're done right now." And that was it for Nick Kaniski in WWF, and he. Um, he wrestled for AWA with Kevin Kelly, magnificent Kevin Kelly, um, with Medusa as their manager. But, you know, he was out of wrestling a couple of years later. And um, apparently at this point in his life, he's very grateful that he never made it in pro wrestling because he's seen what happened to a lot of the pro wrestlers of his era. And he said he's lived a great life. So that's the Nick Kaniski story. But it's like another one. And, you know, I mean, it's it's a it's. You know, when people talk about the roots of the company and everything like that, I mean, it's been there. It's been there forever, forever, you know, as far as, you know, that that type of stuff that was allowed to happen under Vince, that happened under his watch. He did know about it. People complained to him about it. He did nothing about it. Um, that was in, you know, this stuff is in the 80s, but it's a pattern. And, um, you know. You know, people, you know, when they, when they talk about the rot in 
that company and it institutionalized and all that. That's true. It really was institutionalized. I mean, it's, these are stories long ago, not stories now. But um, obviously, you know, with Janelle Grant, that story is not that long ago. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those, it's just the reality of, of that company under Vince McMahon, you know, for all those years. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.